And are you ready now? Ow! <laughs> hey everybody, Thomas Miller on the Fun Astrology Podcast. It is that time again. 12.52 or 53 thereabouts, wherever you are in the world, is the Leo full moon today. And today's chart and Saturday's chart, if you move up to Saturday, everything applying to or moving toward or getting bigger between now and Saturday, this full moon is the really predecessor of these aspects that are coming up Saturday, including not only an aspect, but Uranus going direct. So Uranus is very powerful right now and is the higher octave, of course, of Mercury. So in a way, it almost kind of brings a Mercury retrograde component into this full moon. Not that it is Mercury retrograde, don't think about that, but it is a strong Uranus. Let's at least call it what it is, and it is a strong Uranus. And that's on top of something that is not in the astrological chart, and that is all the sunspots that hit us starting Monday, but really crescendoing on Tuesday. But the dribble effect or residual effect of that is continuing on into the weekend. If you didn't see about that, there were two big solar flares on Tuesday, and they were right next door to each other on the sun. In and of themselves, they weren't that strong. But combined, that combined energy, and they were like, boom, boom, one right after the other, sent that toward Earth very fast. So that was Tuesday's solar energy was just ding, 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 ding on my apps all day. Then the CMEs, the coronal mass ejections, those are the ones that take several days to hit, and that's what we're still in. And there was another minor one yesterday. So let me reiterate what we're dealing with. A full moon in and of itself, its own characteristics of weirdness. Uranus stationing direct, bringing its own characteristics of weirdness. And the radio blackout, or at least electromagnetic effects of the solar flares and CMEs. Remember, the distinction is that the solar flares come to Earth very fast. That energy, that initial burst energy, comes to Earth very fast. The mass ejection energy comes days later. So let's take a look at this full moon and put the pieces together. First of all, it is a Leo full moon. The moon took care of that at 2.36 this morning. So this is a fresh Leo new moon, and the new moon is occurring at approximately 12.53 p.m., depending on where you are, at 5 degrees 15 minutes Leo. Of course, on full moons, the moon and the sun are opposite each other in the chart, and that puts the midpoint between these two, between the sun and the moon, at 6 degrees 3 minutes Scorpio. <laughs> like, whoa! Okay, so the midpoint of these two luminary energies Happen to be sitting right on top of my Mars and Tune, my combination of Sun, Mars, and Neptune planets. So that'll be interesting. I'll certainly have my little eyebrow twitched all day today to see what happens with that. And this is always why you need to put the transit chart on top of your natal chart to make sure that you see what's going on and how this affects you. So where is your five degree Aquarius? Maybe if you're an Aquarian, this is the Sun is sitting right on top of it, along with Pluto. What about Leo? Are you a Leo? Well, how close is six degrees to you? Because that's obviously going to affect you. So these are things that you have to look at and just take what we talk about here and then take it one step further and put it with your own chart. Now, a couple of T-squares in this chart as well that are very significant. What is that? Two planets opposite each other with another planet at squares to both. So it forms, in essence, a little short triangle. The first T-square includes the sun and moon itself, themselves, and that is square to Jupiter. Jupiter is at 6 degrees 42 minutes, and that exact aspect happens on Saturday, so that is applying, that's getting stronger. What that's doing, keep in mind, what Jupiter's primary function is, is to expand. It's to make bigger, it's to accentuate. So this full moon, in all of its glory and weirdness and whatever else, is amplified by Jupiter. And remember... Uranus is going direct on Saturday. In fact, we had a post on our Facebook group that everybody was feeling tension on Tuesday. This post was came on Tuesday and it said, are you feeling this tension that's in the air? And a lot of people contributed that they were. So what you had on Tuesday, if you were feeling, if you've been feeling weird this week, you've, you have this applying full moon, the slowing down Uranus, and you had those solar flares stacked on top of it. 
all this energy getting stronger each day. Well, the full moon crescendo is today. The Uranus crescendo is not until early, early Saturday morning, 2.35 Eastern on that. So that continues to build right on past the full moon. And then Jupiter is getting stronger and stronger with this pull of tension. Then the other T-square is between Mars and Mercury, which both are conjoining tomorrow, or in a T-square to the nodes of the moon. This is making communication, or let's say delicate communication, a little bit edgy this week. And I stepped in it, actually, on Monday. I did in this uh, situation that I'm working on out here in California. And I, um, I had to kind of backtrack on that. So watch out what's going on as far as even jovial communication could be heard wrong. And that's what happened with me. I was trying to be funny, and it didn't come across as funny. It was to me, but not to the receiver, the recipient. So be careful how you phrase things and just kind of go into a little bit of communication caution mode right here. How you intended it might not be how it comes out to another person. And obviously, this is going to put some tension on our little karmic path, too, as well. The spiritual side of this, because the Mars, Mercury could be a challenge or it could be amplified but what I'm more leaning toward with Uranus being the higher octave of Mercury that we're talking about something that is a little bit punched and could be a little tricky there, especially since it's in a T-square and it is Mars. And I know you're saying, yeah, Thomas, but Mars is in Capricorn. Look at the rest of the chart. There's a dynamic of tension around this full moon. So I'm just saying, be careful with it. Be careful. And we will be back tomorrow to set up the weekend, which has quite a bit of moving parts, quite a few moving parts, and we'll cover all of those tomorrow. Hope you've had a good week. I've been very busy, and we'll update on the trip when the time is appropriate and allows. You have a great full moon today, and I will see you back tomorrow. Tomorrow.